please welcome our first comic of the show, Ben Mel. Yes, Vegas, we're here, we're doing it. I, uh, I flew in, I didn't drive in. It was a terrible mistake. They put me next to this guy on the plane who was coughing his lungs out nonstop. He's like, don't worry, it's not COVID. I was like, yeah, it sounds way worse. I was like, do you work in a coal mine? He was like, oh, isn't it so cool they're letting us fly again? I'm like, yeah, it's really cool. I've never met anybody with tuberculosis before. He's like, God, when this plane lands, promise me you're gonna get help. Jesus. Crazy, man. As soon as the plane landed, my mom called me. She was like, hey, I hope you have a great show. Did you get the gift I sent? My mom is one of those people who gives the worst gifts. Like the worst. For my birthday last year, she got me cologne by Johnny Depp. <laughs> what about me scream Savage by Johnny Depp? So I called her up, I'm like, mom, why on earth would you get me cologne by Johnny Depp? She was like, well, I know you love that movie Donnie Brasco where he played the uh, FBI agent and the gangster. I'm like, well, you should have got me a gun. That's a way better gift. <laughs> For Hanukkah last year, she got me sneakers with pockets. So I opened the pockets and there was tons of weed. So I was like, finally, a gift I can get behind. But I called her, I'm like, mom, I'm pretty sure you can't send weed through the mail. That's a federal offense. And she was like, are you calling me from a landline? I was like, yeah, why? She's like, well, in that case, I didn't send you shit. Snitches get stitches. Yeah. I'm really proud of my mom. She's become a huge addict, advocate, advocate for medical marijuana. Well, she's not really an advocate. She's a drug dealer. She's, um, she's the biggest drug dealer in New Jersey. It's a very exciting time for my family. Um, she's my brother's drug dealer, actually. And I hadn't heard from him for a while, so I called her and I was like, what's going on? She's like, well, he didn't pay me on time, so. I was like, what? She was like, this is New Jersey, sweetheart. We have rules. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in from LA. I live in LA now. I live next to a 7-Eleven, not to brag. And um, every day there's a line outside for Redbox. And I was thinking to myself the other day, like, how is Redbox still a thing, right? Like, there are better ways to rent a movie than getting stabbed at a 7-Eleven. You know? Like, when have you been to a 7-Eleven? Like, this is really nice. I feel safe here. Every time I'm in 7-Eleven, I'm like, there is a man ordering a hot dog from a tanning bed. This is not a safe space. And the directions for Redbox are a recipe for getting murdered. It's step one, turn your back to this sketchy parking lot. <laughs> step two, take out your credit card. <laughs> step three, submerge yourself in this dirty red mesh hood. <laughs> and for what? The movies aren't new. Like I refuse to get stabbed over we bought a zoo. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. That's like Matt Damon's 13th best movie. Can you imagine if you got stabbed over We Bought a Zoo, you'd have to go to the hospital and the doctor would be like, sir, those are some pretty aggressive stab wounds. Are you gang affiliated? No, I'm just a huge Matt Damon fan. <laughs> it's crazy. And that movie, the premise is so stupid. The kid's mom dies and the dad's like, hey son, I know you have a gaping hole in your heart because your mom just died of cancer. Here's a giraffe. Therapy? Oh, you won't have time for therapy. You're gonna be cleaning giraffe shit for the next 25 years. <laughs> And I hope you have a large Instagram following, because you, if you can't get people to come out to the zoo, I'm gonna have to kill your pet giraffe and feed it to the lions to make space. <laughs> oh, and one last thing, bud. Don't worry about the birds and bees talk. You're gonna see a lot of animals fucking, and it will not be consensual. <laughs> That's not how life works. My dad died right before my 16th birthday. I didn't get a fucking giraffe. My neighbor came over with a tuna casserole. She was like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm like, you should be, Tina. This casserole tastes like shit. <laughs> I'm surprised Rick didn't leave you. <laughs> Try some garlic, read a book. God. Yeah, I live in LA and uh, I'm really excited. I found a new dry cleaner out there, but I'm pretty sure she's racist. Yeah, because the first thing she said to me was fluff and fold is only $19 as long as you're not a Jew. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck did you just say to me? Fluff and fold is only $19? That's amazing. That is a great deal. 
But it's hard having an anti-Semite for a dry cleaner because, you know, my grandmother escaped the Holocaust. But like $19. <laughs> I feel like my grandmother would be proud of me for being such a good Jew, you know? Last time I went in there, my dry cleaner, Sonia, was like, Ben, you're a comedian, bring in a headshot. So I bring one in, she turns to this row of headshots behind me, behind her, and she rips one off the wall. And she puts me up next to David Hasselhoff, the guy who made Running on the Beach in Slow Motion cool, and Magic Johnson, the guy who made HIV cool. <laughs> and I was just thinking like, what a bitch. Like that's so much pressure. People are gonna come in here and be like, Magic Johnson goes to this dry cleaner? Who the fuck is that next to Magic Johnson? <laughs> And then they're gonna Google me and see I was a dead body on one CSI episode. <laughs> so she's like, Ben, write something funny. So I'm looking around for the vibe of like what people have written and Magic Johnson wrote, Dear Sonia, thanks for putting the full court press on my dry cleaning. You motherfucker. <laughs> you have five world champions, you beat HIV, and you gotta have the best dry cleaning pun of all time. Like what is it, what is it enough for this guy? So I didn't know what to write, so I wrote the first thing that came to my head. I wrote, Dear Sonia, the joke's on you. I am a Jew. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, guys, I got, uh, I got married during the pandemic. Yes. Yes. Yes, give it up for monogamy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else get married during the most uncertain time in American history? Anybody else? Join finances with no job, no income, no health insurance, no prospects. Yes. I married a beautiful black woman. Yes. 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 And not because of Black Lives Matter. We were together way before white people pretended to care about black people. Yeah. 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 All the white people in here are like, shut the fuck up, Ben. You're going to ruin this for us. I put that sign on my car. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you get married, it's crazy because you, you don't realize how busy you're going to be. Like, there's so much stuff you have to do, right? Like, I had to go tuxedo shopping, and it was revealed I have terrible taste because I wanted a green tuxedo. And my fiance was like, Ben, you cannot wear a green tuxedo to our wedding. I was like, why not? She was like, because you're going to look like a fucking leprechaun. <laughs> and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's racist. <laughs> I had to get an engagement ring. Why am I in charge of that? I've never been to a jewelry store in my entire life, and now I have to buy a ring for a woman's like, yeah, pick out the exact ring I want, even though we've never had this conversation before, and I don't know you're proposing, wink, wink. <laughs> the fuck is that? So I go to the jewelry store, and you ever go shopping, the salesperson's just too good, and you're like, how am I gonna get out of this situation? And the saleswoman stops me, and she's like, sir, this is one of our loveliest diamonds, it's $20,000. And I'm like, well, it's beautiful, and I'm flattered you think I have $20,000. <laughs> Well, sir, if you prefer cheaper options. And I was like, ooh, you sneaky bitch. Because I know exactly what that means. That means if I don't buy this ring, I'm a piece of garbage who doesn't appreciate his girlfriend. And if I do buy the ring, she gets a huge commission, but I'm homeless. So I was like, what am I going to do? How am I going to get in the situation? She's like, sir, I can tell you're stressed out. Just to put your mind at ease, all of our diamonds are ethically sourced. We do not deal in blood diamonds. And I was like... That's gonna be a deal breaker for me. <laughs> My fiance really had her heart set on a blood diamond. She's like, sir, I don't think you know what that means. I'm like, oh no, no, I get it. I am anti-blood diamond. I'm anti-child I'm anti soldier. But my fiance, I just know what she likes. You sure you don't have any in the back? She's like, sir, we don't have any blood diamonds in the back. I was like, hey, before I left the house, my fiance said two things. Ever since I was a little girl, I've wanted a big wedding and a blood diamond. The bloodier, the better. So who am I to ruin a little girl's dream? <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, like many of you, I couldn't travel during the pandemic, and the last time I was around family, I was at my wife's family reunion. I was the only white person at my wife's family reunion. Yeah, and her grandmother was so sweet. She gathered generations of this beautiful black family and me for a photo. And she was so cool. She was like, Ben, honey, get out of the photo. I get it. If it doesn't work out, that would be a tough photo to Photoshop me out of. It's not like you can bring that one to Kinko's. Like, what can you do with this? You know? 
I think my mother-in-law felt bad because she brought me to her work the next day and showed me off to all her coworkers. And this woman comes up to me and she hugs me so tight. And she's like, may Jesus bless you with all of his powers and his heart. She hugged me so hard, I forgot I was Jewish. I was like, amen, I feel the power of the Lord. Until my fiance shouted, don't hug him, he's a Jew. And the lady was like, Jesus, bless this boy double. I was like, guys, to be fair, Jesus was a Jew a long time ago. And she was like, not in Texas, baby. Yeah, I was busy, very busy during the pandemic. I also got my wife pregnant. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. And uh, the whole time I was terrified though, because I was like, if we have an ugly child, her family will know exactly who's responsible. You know? Like if we have a Blake Griffin, instead of an Idris Elba, her grandma's gonna be pissed, you know? Like, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna, I don't wanna give my kid red hair. I feel like black women have been through enough, you know? You know, there's only been two successful black men ever with red hair. Malcolm X, assassinated, and Blake Griffin, traded to Detroit. It's pretty much the same thing, you know? Having red hair is a burden. Having red hair is a burden. I remember the first time I got made fun of for having red hair. It was in the sixth grade. This kid came up to me. He was like, hey, man, does the carpet match the drapes? I didn't even know what he was talking about. I was like, I don't know. I'm going to have to ask my mom. Um, she usually handles the interior design. He was like, ew, you're gross. I was like, you're the creep who's into interior design, not me, pal. Yeah. The whole time, the whole time my wife was pregnant, everybody was like, what are you gonna name your kid? What are you gonna name your kid? What are you gonna name your kid? So finally I called my mom and said, hey mom, if we have a boy, I'm gonna name him Tyrone. She was like, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, you can't fucking do that. She was like, play it safe, name your kid Dylan. I was like, mom, there's been six school shooters named Dylan. The only thing that Tyrone's ever done is help his shitty friend move at Erica Badu's apartment. Yeah. Tyrone's a hero's name as far as I'm concerned. You know why there's never been a Tyrone who shot up a school? Because he was too busy drowning in pussy, that's why. All right, thanks guys, I'm Ben Mail.